Shalom in Messiah the Branch. Today is March 8th, 2017. We will be covering today the uh, a number of uh, monthly fill letters by Lois Roden uh, to further determine who brought the message of the Divine Family beginning in 1977 and concluding in 1986, uh, November of 86 when Lois Roden died. Our monthly field letters reveal a great deal of very interesting and good information in, of the Branch She message, which brought the double portion of not only the Divine Mother, but also the Divine Daughter as well, which we'll, we will show here in this uh, video. Um, I will show you at either this video or, or another one of the actual uh, monthly field letters, which I have in my possession, the actual mailed out field letters which are digital to, did, excuse me, digitally um, reproduced on this website, uh, theadventmovement.net. And I'll, I'll show here uh, in the publication section, here under the branch message, uh, excuse me, it'll be further down. Here in the, uh, the uh, page here, the branch uh, monthly fill letters down here by Lois Roden, where um, all of these fill letters can be read, uh, ex you know, from beginning to end. I'm only going to cover certain portions today that are highlighted to bring out the truth of what she revealed in her day. Uh, all those fill letters are here, and they uh, come up in a PDF document which can be also can be downloaded or any of these documents can be downloaded if you choose at some later uh, date I'll have this uh, download section active so all the branch um, message message the branch he and the branch she and all the studies can be downloaded easily uh, at some later date First, I'd like to ask the attendance of the Holy Spirit uh, in this uh, reading and uh, to, to be um, revealed also to the reader in what is heard and to study uh, these things out. In the name of the branch, so may it be. I will start with the monthly fill letter, April 10th, 1986. Where she is speaking about uh, the seven angels uh, dealing with the seven last plagues or the seven plagues, as she brings out here. Uh, this is her opening, and showing the conclusion of prophetic time and the uh, pouring out of the bowls of uh, the plagues. Here in this next section, and that was in re reference to uh, Revelation uh, 21, uh, Revelation 19 as well. Here she initiates her uh, section on the bride and the bridegroom. She begins with the bride. Here we see how she presents the bride and and the bridegroom in their various symbolic uh, representations in the uh, book of Revelation. And then getting into the celestial representations of the bride and the bridegroom in the Maseroth or the signs or constellations in the heavens, the um, 12 major constellations, actually 13 including uh, Orion. Christ, uh, the gospel and the stars, Christ and his Holy Spirit, uh, and representing how the planet Venus is both an evening star, uh, particularly this time of year in March, it's quite bright in the western sky, and also the morning star um, at a different time of year. The law of creation is the double 
male and females in the Adam as in Adam and uh, Adam male and female in one person then in two Adams or mates twins male and female as one but two Genesis 5 1 this was a, a recurring theme in Lois Roden's message dealing with Adam as the revelation of Christ himself and then being put to sleep and then uh, his glory being manifested after uh, while he was asleep and brought to him after he was awakened when the only begotten son Abel was revealed in heaven in the image of the father he represented male and female in one person but when the father and his glory gave over all authority to the son it was then that the glory of the Son was revealed. This is the same as um, Lois Roden covers this quite extensively in, in her monthly fill letters and in other places as well. Quite a, quite a few uh, references. Behold thy mother in their image, uh, in the beginning uh, study tract, um, which is the place we go to to understand how the glory of the Son was revealed first in heaven uh, in the in the um, time of the first great controversy between between Christ and Satan so she's she brings this out in many places uh, also has brought out in the I believe it's the second chapter of the book Pro Patriarchs and Prophets yeah, and she brings out here it was the glory that Satan coveted he envied Christ for receiving his glory thereby he destroyed his own glory spirit or self-murder and wanted the glory which belonged to another Christ or Abel to obtain another's glory he marshaled the host of rebellious angels to destroy the heir and take his glory to himself we only get a small glimpse of what that event was what the, that time was before the earth, before Adam and Eve were created. Uh, going, continuing on here, feel free to stop the uh, video any time and, and read any context that you would like to read. And um, she concludes this um, fill, monthly fill letter, your servant of the Holy Ghost, the branch she the Lord our righteousness. It's the branch she is the uh, feminine Lord our righteousness as is brought, as is brought out in uh, Jeremiah 33 I believe verse 15. It's the uh, referencing both the head and the body uh, since she is the head of the body in the earth. Christ is the head in the heavens. We can't ha we can't see him again until he returns, or until the wave sheep see him um, at the marriage. She concludes here, showing that um, there are two great opposing powers revealed in the last great battle. On one side stands the creators of heaven and earth. On all on his or their side bear his signet. They are obedient to his commands. On the other side stands the prince of darkness with those who have chosen apostasy and rebellion. Next I will go to uh, monthly fill letter uh, 7, or excuse me, um, New Moon, May 10th, 1986, The Bride of Christ in the Parable of the Ten Virgins. Part 1, uh, I think she has three parts to this, in the same in the same fill letter. Uh, she initiated her monthly fill letters uh, speaking about the ministry of angels and here in 1986 she's getting more direct as to the fuller the full understanding of who Christ the daughter was and how she was revealed uh, not only in the first great controversy in heaven before Adam and Eve were created but also in the great controversy, uh, great controversy that took place in the branch from uh, about 1981 to 1984 and onwards, 
um, with the great events that were uh, controversies that were taking place at New Mount Carmel at that time, attempting to stop Lois Roden's publishing ministry. Here she's re revealing about the um, the, power, the place of the wave sheaf and what will be revealed to them in the revelation of Christ. Uh, and her her uh, her primary center point in what she's saying here is always focusing on Christ the Son, Christ who came in humanity. She says here, the more we think about Christ becoming a babe here on earth, the more wonderful it appears. How can it be that the helpless babe in Bethlehem's manger, uh, manger is still the divine Son of God? Though we cannot understand it, we can believe that he who made the worlds for our sakes became a helpless babe. Though higher than any of the angels, though as great as the Father on the throne of heaven, he became one of us. In him, God and man became one. And it is in this fact that we find the hope of our fellow race. Looking upon Christ in the flesh, we look upon God in humanity, Adam and Eve, and see in him the brightness of divine glory, the express image of God, the, f the Father, male and female, Genesis 1, 26, 27. That's a quote from uh, Ellen White, Youth instruct Instructor, 19, 1895. So she's saying here that... Um, we are to look to Christ uh, in the flesh, and when he became flesh. And we don't see him now, but we know he is real. We know he is here among us in spirit through his glory, through the Holy Ghost. And she too has taken on humanity and will become visible to the body. But first, we have to accept her place and her position without any intermediary among men today as she uh, is the only intercessor for us and the only head of the body. There can't be two heads. There can't be a head um, that's invisible and a mouth that's visible or, you know, the eyes, all these representations that are part of the head. The head is one and it's not a, a um, division of symbolism to somehow prove that a man among us is the the head or the Emmanuel in any type. There's only one Emmanuel uh, in person and that's Christ. The Emmanuel in the antitype is the body or a class of individuals which is exactly what Victor Hodef taught and Ben Roden taught. Victor Hodef taught it in tract, uh, tract 10 I think it was Sign of Jonah, and um, other places in his writings. And uh, Ben Roden was quite clear about it too in uh, uh, Branch Lesson number three. Continuing on here, The Bride of Christ, um, she again goes on in quotes uh, Ellen White, 1906, there is light and glory in the truth that Christ was one with the Father before the foundation of the world was laid. And how that truth explains other mysterious and otherwise unexplainable truths in the light of uh, Romans 120. She says here, the King of the universe, the Eternal Father, summoned the heavenly host before him that in their presence he might set forth the true position of his Son and show the relation he sustained to all created beings. The Son of God shared the Father's throne and the glory of the eternal self-existent one. She puts here, the Holy Spirit encircled both. So Christ was the central theme of this message, the Jonah message. Now, she's quoting here from Patriarchs and Prophets, page uh, 36. I believe that's the second ch chapter. This is the very chapter um, Charles Pace uh, taught from, um, First Day of Unleavened Bread, 1984, at New Mount Carmel, to the group um, 
gathered there. Uh, Lois Roden was also in attendance at that meeting. It was quite a large group. Uh, Vernon Howell's group and George Roden and those that were backing on his side of the issue since he was actively fighting against, not, not physically, but spiritually fighting um, and resisting the takeover of New Mount Carmel and more so the takeover of the people's minds that live there who almost totally, all, almost all of them um, sided with Vernon Howell unfortunately and to their own detriment. So she says, she's quoting here from this as she often does to the uh, beginning not only to Adam and Eve uh, referencing how they were a revelation of Christ the son and Christ the daughter but also going back into um, who knows how long before Adam and Eve created uh, to the first great controversy in heaven be between Christ and Satan so she goes on to say here um, that the children of the bridegroom uh, are the ones born of the Holy Ghost. We're not born by someone today. We're born through Christ the Son and Christ the Daughter through the Word and uh, begotten by the Word and born of the Holy Ghost. The two coming together, the two animating forces in creation that not only created Adam from the dust of the ground, but also breathed the life into him. It was the Divine Daughter, the Holy Ghost, who breathed the very life into Adam after Christ the Son formed him from the dust. So we see that Lois Roden here is always appealing to the, um, the typology of creation and the typology of the first great controversy in heaven. She states here, therefore, according to the scriptures, we can see clearly by the power of the Holy Ghost in the story of the creation of Adam and Eve that God, Elohim, is male and female. Genesis 1.26 Two Adams, male and female, made in the image of at least two persons called God. She's, she's leading us here step by step to the, the, the full understanding of what she she did bring out in um, 1980 prior to 1984 in her literature before her publishing stopped for about a year due to Vernon Howell's attacks and destroying the whole publishing facility at New Mount Carmel she was bringing this out step by step and she's kind of she's getting back on track here so she goes on here to say and God said let us the Father and Holy Spirit the Son and His Spirit, the Holy Ghost, here she's showing here four members of the Godhead once again, as uh, she says later on much more clearly. Four, in fact she states here, four, make mankind in our image after our likeness. Let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea. Hebrews 11, Psalm 104. Uh, and this is page two of an eight-page uh, tract where she states this. Um, so she's making very clear here who the creators are uh, the Father and the Holy Sp Father Most High Father and the Divine Mother Most High were present at creation but the active force was through the Son and His, his Spirit uh, through Him as, as uh, Colossians 1 says through Him, by Him and for Him uh, everything was made um, Hebrews 1 and uh, Colossians 1 I believe so she reviews this repeatedly of how the creation story reveals Christ without question and only Christ and the only typology we can apply today as Christ in any type is Christ as a body of believers that is the branch believers those that believe in the branch he and the branch she message those two messages coming together fully received 
is a spiritual birth and we become adopted children of Christ through that process of receiving the latest messages through um, the third sealing message through Ben LaRodin and Lois Roden. Uh, those who accepted Ben Roden's message but did not accept Lois Roden's message, well, they didn't get the birth. It's all or none. Some think they can just accept Ben Roden and have the third seal on them. And, and my understanding is that that's not true. And it's a very um, precarious place to be to think one can accept one message or one messenger and then reject the next one. It doesn't work that way. She goes on to say here the um, how Adam was made in the image of God, male and female, as one person. Therefore, the lesson shows that the second Adam was to be revealed first as one person in the flesh. That implication there, in the flesh, speaks volumes about Christ the Son and Christ the Daughter taking on flesh. And this is, in part at least, I believe, why she, Lois Roden, taught extensively on the ministry of angels early in her uh, publishing in 1985 in the monthly field letters. Uh, continuing, she says, in the image of God, who is male and female, and that upon his return to paradise, the heavenly Eden, his helpmeet, bride, would be revealed as Eve, Adam's spirit, feminine self, who was brought forth from his side in the earthly Garden of Eden. Interesting. Um, we can even say that the cross of Calvary was the beginning of the Garden of Eden restored. Because, as the word says, Behold, I make all things new. It was that death that gave his death that gave birth, not birth, but revelation to the divine daughter, which now could create the church, create the body of Messiah in the earth. And also, of course, to reveal the, uh, the atonement based on uh, Leviticus 14, the two turtle doves. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs, a part of his side, and closed up the uh, place, the flesh, instead of it. Genesis 2. Uh, the first Adam's deep sleep, he later died because of sin, was a type of the second Adam's death that was to bring forth his bride. <clears throat> so she's revealing here how the first Adam became a revelation, that his uh, sleep became a revelation of his glory within him. The, uh, then Adam said, This creature is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Notice Eve was made of living flesh and bone in the Garden of Eden, the earthly throne of God. Uh, the first Adam symbolically died or slept, prefiguring the death of the second Adam, so that the Lord God could reveal his bride. A part of him, flesh, blood, and spirit water, in the heavenly Eden throne of God in paradise. And she shall be called God, because she was taken out of Christ. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came, uh, uh, flowed forth or came, came out, that the scripture might be fulfilled, Zechariah 12.10 and John 19, um, 34-36. Two separate symbolic streams gushed forth from the Savior's side, one of blood, flesh, and another of water, spirit, signifying in the first instance his human flesh and blood and his divine nature spirit water and secondly the division of himself like the first Adam to reveal his spirit self the Holy Ghost his bride this is very clear uh, description she gives here 
of how the Divine Daughter was brought forth from the second Adam at the cross. She says here in this paragraph, This was his message to us who look upon his suffering to bring forth the truth of the Holy Ghost. With scriptural references, his soul, the Holy Ghost, emerged from its mysterious horrors. The Son of God yields up into his Father's hands his infinitely precious gift, or infinitely precious spirit, Psalm 31. This comforter, John 14, in his name is the Holy Ghost, soul or spirit, the soul of his uh, Christ's life, Review and Herald, um, volume 5, uh, it doesn't give a date there. Page 42, that's an Ellen White quote. His cry, it is finished, was his last, and he bowed his head and gave up the Holy Ghost, John 19, 20, 30. Uh, part 2, The Bride of Christ, Matthew 25, the uh, wedding parable and how it proceeds in the Hebrew economy and how the bridegroom goes forth to meet his bride to bring her to his home. Uh, this going forth here um, is the same as the um, coming in judgment, Christ the Son coming in judgment, which I teach happened in 1990 at Passover time, to go forth to meet his bride. He hasn't seen her yet. He's just preparing for her in close proximity, and we'll cover that in another um, video from Lois Roden's another um, study of Lois Rodens. I don't want to go into that right now. And the Midnight Cry, and this this is the experience of the church just before his second coming, Christ Object Lessons, page 416. And then she reviews the message of the third angel of 1844 and how this was played out in what I call an Advent type uh, in the Advent movement and how it applies today. It's, it's what I would call a local type, uh, how Christ is going to be revealed and how the marriage is going to come about. And she says here, uh, re re relating to, uh, I believe, Zechariah 4, and I uh, answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches? which through the two golden pipes of the prophets empty the golden oil out of themselves. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Uh, entering Wedge, page 38, the two divine guides of life, the word and nature, are the best and only teachers that speak with uh, the divine authority. Two olive branches, the identity of the two olive branches, the two anointed ones, stand by God, the whole earth. Uh, the, how the golden bowl functions. The two olive trees have been uh, defined by the spirit of prophecy in times past to be the Old and New Testament, uh, the two trees. Uh, in another statement, Lois Roden says that Zerubbabel is a type of the Holy Ghost, which actually says right here, the word of God to Zerubbabel, governor, or symbol of the Holy Ghost who relates the scripture to the prophets by direct inspiration. Zerubbabel isn't a man or a woman today. It is the divine daughter, one of her representations in the type. Uh, as it says in Zechariah 4, Zerubbabel has laid the foundation and his hands, or her hands, as Lois Roden would say, her hands will finish it. 
So this is covering a period of time, the Zerubbabel type, a, a period of time of 2,000 years. I don't know of any man or woman today that's that old. These are representations, types, rep, uh, pointing to Christ. Uh, she says, thus making the two witnesses represent the scriptures, or two branches, the Old and New Testament, just like Victor Hodov taught. Um, in the Old Testament tree, we see the revelation of the Father as one, under the Mosaic dispensation by a prophet Moses with the promise of a son. Now, that son, of course, is deity. And there's no personal antitype of deity in our day. There is only the corporate application of the Emmanuel or the branch, she, the congregation of the body of Messiah, as we see today in the message. Not an individual, but a corporate body. Uh, in the New Testament tree is the revelation of the only begotten Son as one, made in the image of God the Father. And showing that the two male figures reveal, revealed as two trees, but then revealing the, the branches that come off each of those trees, which are the anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. She defines this more clearly. She says, in the primary application, one of the divine guides of, of life, nature, in the light of Romans 1.20, Genesis 1.26, only can tell us who these two anointed ones are. The key is found in Genesis 2.21. From the tree, the first Adam, a branch, or a rib, was brought forth. In the first step of creation, Adam was made in the image of Christ, his creator, one person. In the second step, God took one of his ribs, a branch of him, and made he a woman and brought her to the man. Bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, Genesis 2. So he's applying this whole symbology of Zechariah 4, the golden bowl, to Christ. Not only to the Father and the Mother Most High, but Christ, the branch he and the branch she, Christ the Son and Christ the Daughter. Which is the whole, which is the fullness of the of the entire fullness and the focus of the entire gospel message. We're not to we're not to direct our attention to any man today. That would take our eyes off Christ. And it's as if that man claims or presumes perfection, even in his imperfection, even though he admits an imper his imperfected imperfection. I've heard a man teach at Mount Carmel today, New Mount Carmel. Even when I'm wrong, I'm right. Well, I don't accept that. I'm sorry. Only Christ is perfect. And we don't have a teaching of infallibility in this movement. Ellen White was very clear about that in her position. I believe it's One Selected Messages, page uh, uh, 36, I, I believe, that she said she never claimed infallibility. And none of the messengers ever have claimed infallibility from her time to, uh, to the present day. Thus, Adam became two male and female persons, both called Adam. Here is the revelation of Christ. Eve was made in the image of God, her creator in heaven. And God said, let us make man in our image, male and female, like the first earthly Adam, Christ his creator, the heavenly Adam, by creating Adam and Eve in his image, male and female, revealed his co-creator, a branch of himself, the Holy Ghost, his helpmate, standing by him, Zechariah 4.14. She invokes the very verse of the um, branch coming off uh, one of the golden pipes, or off the, rather the tree. In this in the symbolic symbolic representation of the golden bowl so she's bringing out very clearly here that Christ had a dual nature and a, a dual revelation of himself the branch he and the branch she the sum of all this nature story is as the heavenly Adam the Son of God and the earthly Son of God Adam were made in the image of the eternal Father in heaven 
then the evidence is conclusive. The eternal father has a female counterpart, the branch of him, a branch of himself, just like Zechariah 4 represents in that uh, depiction of that picture of the trees and the golden bowl and a branch coming off each of those two trees. A co-creator standing by him, the Holy Spirit, the Eternal Mother. All these symbols denote two sets of witnesses in heaven, the Eternal Father, the Eternal Mother, the Everlasting Father, Christ, and the Everlasting Mother, the Holy Ghost. Lois Roden was being very plain here. It was time, of course, for her to be so. Uh, she was also very clear um, at Passover 1981 in her um, uh, study, The Wife of God and In Their Image, as I presented in uh, the previous video. She says here, in the earth, two sets of witnesses, the first Adam and Eve and the second Adam and Eve, Christ uh, and Eve, the Holy Ghost, to be further revealed in the next publication. And I'll skip through here as she goes through the um, further uh, summary of the ten virgins and the um, parable of the, the, the wedding parable in Matthew 25. And what the um, place of the bridal party is in this image and parable prophecy. Again here she's uh, relating to the Jerusalem above, the mother of us all. Therefore the bride is one as the bridegroom is one. In the parable of Christ the, whole, the heavenly bridegroom and his bride are members of the Godhead, the only begotten Son, and His Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Very clear. And she concludes here in this part, the next event to take place in the harvest of souls and the end of the world is the coming of the Bridegroom, Christ, and His betrothed Bride, the Holy Ghost for the living wave sheaf from the remnant church who will be joined by the resurrected wave sheaf since 1844 for their inauguration into their kingdom of glory with Christ and his bride in the kingdom of glory in the most holy apartment of the heavenly sanctuary the bridal chamber that's where the uh, where the marriage will take place and the wave sheaf will witness this event then the latter rain, the Holy Ghost in power, will be poured out upon the waiting guests, 144,000 who are still on earth, 144,000 are not there. They missed the marriage because they weren't ready. Represented by the five foolish virgins. Um, not a representation of proportion, but a representation of um, a group, irrespective of number the 144,000 in relation to the wave sheaf, the 144,000 living saints on Mount Zion and earthly Jerusalem. So she's saying here, the next event to take place in the harvest of souls and the end of the world is the coming of the bridegroom. Well, the bridegroom comes to get his wife, to take his wife back to his father's house to be married. That's the Hebrew tradition from Christ's day till, till today. So, this coming of the bridegroom is as a judge, not as a priest, but as a judge, which comports with the date given by Lois Roden, 1990, the final date of the 430 year application that she said something great would happen. He's, he came to get his bride. He has not get, gotten her yet. He is still, still in the immediate uh, heavens which I will cover in another study of Lois Roden's, uh, hopefully um, after I'm done with the monthly fill letters, which is uh, in the works. And this coming is, as 
she says here, for the living wave sheaf from the remnant church, who will be joined by the resurrected since 1844. Uh, Ellen White said, those who died in the faith of the third angel's message, keeping the Sabbath, will be raised to hear the covenant of peace, and that's the marriage. And uh, that's an exact quote from her. Um, will be raised to hear the covenant of peace. Uh, she states that in early writings. Uh, which happens well before the resurrection, or the, rather the first resurrection, at the end of time. This resurrection here that Lois Roden is referring to is the special resurrection of Daniel 12, too. I will conclude here in this part and take up in part two. Thank you for your attention. Shalom.